uh, one of her daughter-in-laws left, and she was so touched by her circumstances that she altered her name. Remember, nobody else named her this. She named herself this herself because the enemy means the enemy uh, uh, means to be good, to be sweet, to be pleasant. And Mara means to be bitter. She couldn't see God working behind the scenes. Even though they're the ones that messed up, God was still working behind the scenes. Some of y'all in here today, you're the ones that messed up. You did. Nobody else. You're the one. But guess what? Even though you messed up in these circumstances that you even might have brought on yourself, God sees you and he's still working behind the scenes to bring you out of these circumstances. God was watching, God was acting, he was waiting, and he was attending until she turned back to him. And then that's when the ball started rolling. And then more people who got caught up in circumstances, Peter walked on the water until he got his eyes off Jesus and onto the circumstances, and he sank. The disciples were Jesus in the garden until they got their eyes on the circumstances, and they ran. Circumstances kept all but one disciple from the cross. They all stayed away. Circumstances kept them behind locked doors. They hid. And circumstances have taken its toll on Naomi. And she said, no longer call me Naomi. Just call me Mark. Call me bitter. Because life has taken a very bitter, bitter turn. So from Naomi to Mark, let's just talk just a little bit. We're getting ready to get into today's stuff. But I got to put that first piece in the puzzle so we can put it completely. These are very important to the Hebrews, and because they're important to the Hebrews, here's why. Because it represents a picture of self or their identity, or it represents their path or their potential, and it represents their, their, their prophet of their future. Just like when uh, Jacob, who meant supplanter, deceiver, was changed to Israel to be friends with God. God changed his name because he was being prophetic about his path and prophetic about his destiny. That God was going to do something very special with him. So now, <coughs> and the Bible tells us <coughs> when we get to heaven, we got a new name. How many remember that? We got new names coming. All right, so here we go. Get ready. Get ready. You choose. Positive or negative, you choose. She was to be an influence in an ungodly land. But instead, her environment influenced her. Not just influenced her, but influenced her so strongly that she began to lose hope in God. Her circumstances had her trapped. Let me ask again. I'm going to ask you boldly. Do not raise your hands. But do you know, are you here today and you feel like your circumstances have you trapped? Do you feel like what you're going through is your lot in life, it's not going to get any better, it's just going to get worse, and you just want to go ahead and ride it out until God calls you home. If that's what you're feeling today, this sermon is for you. Amen? So now, let's, here we go, let's get, let's get rolling. Y'all ready to get rolling? Somebody say get rolling, crazy. Get rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling on the Bible, rolling on the Bible. Okay. Never what? <laughs> you ever been there? You ever been there? You're holding the trap trying to keep it from, like, from hitting you, from coming down on you. We're going to talk about the four ways to overcome uh, life beyond a uh, circumstantial trap. All right? So here's, here's the first two real quick, and then we're going to get to the other two. The other two are going to be so dynamic. I want you, if you're taking notes, take notes. If you don't take notes, take notes because you need to get a good grasp on the last two. Get a good grasp on this, but the last two are life Changing. Or the circumstances are life changing. The last two are going to be life changing. Your present circumstance doesn't determine where you can go. They merely determine where you start. Amen? Refuse to let your circumstance determine your identity. Amen? Amen? Amen. I am not what I'm living through, and nor am I what I've already been through. Y'all going to say this with me? We said it last week. We're going to say it out loud. Say it out loud and proud. Okay, get ready. Get ready. Why does your father call you? Not what you call you. What does your father call you? Ready? Out loud and proud. I am blessed and highly favored. Say it. I am blessed and highly favored. What's this? We are the head and not. Come on, y'all didn't. I can't hear you. We are. 
you're going through, <coughs> devalue you on your path to where God's got something in store on the other side of these circumstances. Potential in Naomi is revealed in her ability to walk through the difficulty of Moab. Listen carefully and come out with Ruth by her side, not Orpha. I don't know if you ever thought about this before, but think about it. When, it. when she's coming out, she's going back to Bethlehem. God's working it. God's working on all the ends. God's in Moab with her. God's in Bethlehem with her. God's got everything under control, although they can't see it. Naomi just says, call me more, call me better. She's going to go back home, though, because she says there is bread there. And so she's going back. And she says, y'all girls stayed here. Orpha stayed. Naomi. Oh, excuse me. Ruth went. Here's the significance. Orpha's name means stiff neck. Ruth's name means beautiful. How does that have a, a name like stiff neck? <laughs> I would not like having a name stiff neck. Orpha, her name was stiff neck. Ruth's name was beautiful. You ready? Here's your life changer. You can't always help find yourself with Moab. She couldn't help it. She was following her husband. But you can determine what you walk out of Moab with. <coughs> wow. Somebody say, wow. You can walk out with bitterness, or you can walk out with something beautiful. The choice is yours. Wow. She had no, no inkling of what was going on. When she followed her husband, she gets there, has no idea she's going to be a widow, and knows she's going to be a widow, but she's going to want to lose her two sons. She had no idea this was going to go down. She had no idea it was going to be worse where she was at than where she was coming from. But when she goes back, and even changed her name, but when she went back, again, here's your choice. You can come out of this bitter, or you can come out of this thing with something beautiful. Which do you want to do? I want her to come out with something beautiful myself. Amen? Satan can't stop it. Satan, let me say it again. Satan can't stop it. Let me say it again. Say it with me. Satan can't stop it. One more time. Satan can't stop it. I choose not to come out of what I mean bitter, but I choose to bring something beautiful with me. One of the greatest things I learned years ago is we're all going to fall down. Every last one's going to fall. If you don't think you're going to fall down, you better get, you better put you on some knee pads and some honey poppers. But you're going to fall down. What I learned was a very valuable lesson is while I'm down there, find something to pick up. So, here it is. Your choice. You coming out of this bitter or are you coming out of this beautiful? Here it goes. Get ready to get deeper in here in a good way. There they are. Refuse to let your circumstance destroy your destiny, your future. Wow. Let me get out. Let me get this out of here. I, I, swear, I just want to. To, to, to talk a little bit more about Ruth. Ruth is such a very powerful, powerful, powerful woman that she has no idea. I'll be in I'll be in prison or I'll be somewhere else talking with somebody or counseling with somebody. And they're saying they're worthless and they're 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 no good or they'll never amount to anything or whatever. And I usually end after I pray with them and tell them, you have no idea just how powerful you are. They go, look at me. I'm wearing an orange. Or look at me. I'm in the hospital. Or look at me. I'm broke. Or look at me. 
My wife and my husband, they left me. Look at me. My children won't talk to me. Look at me. Look at what I mean. Look at my circumstance. And I say, good looking at your circumstance. And I want you to repeat this after me. God, I am powerful in you. One more time. God, It's time for us to rise up no matter how bad it looks. 
If he can take a woman that was well out of years, I already thought her life was over. She was just ready to die and restore not only her hope and bring a son, a grandson, and not only to bring kids to redeemer, and not only do that, but provide her with life so that she can even nurse the baby. I'm here to tell you something. Our God can do anything. Amen. She had no idea that Obed, little Obed, come here Obed, how you doing Obed? Had no idea that Obed one day was going to have Jesse. Had no idea that Jesse was going to have David. Had no idea that David the giant slayer was one day going to be called the son of Jesus, the son of David. God is all powerful. Amen. 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 Just the same thing I did last week. Come on up here, Brandon. Same thing I did last week. It just was too good to, to even add to or take away your challenge this week. The circumstances, the circumstances we ask God to change are often the circumstances God is using to change us. Get ready. This week, instead of asking God why, that's the number one I, thing I hear as a counselor. Why? 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 And my number one answer that is, I don't know. They say, why this? Why now? Why me? So this week, instead of asking these questions, I want you to train yourself to ask God, ready? Instead of why, what? And say, what are you teaching me through this now? What are you teaching me through this now? Not stop asking why this, why now, why me? But instead, what are you teaching me through this now? It's so amazing. So so, so amazing. I see people, I may meet them for the first time, or they may even come look me up. And they'll tell me something about what Bethany did. Do you know that I was really down and out, and I was really having a hard time? And I said, there was Bethany with all that cancer, in a wheelchair, and said, she put her hand out, and she held my hand. He said, I felt the power of God. And she would say, in her sweet voice, don't worry. God's got this. And they would tell me how they walked away and said, a girl going through all that can take my hand and say, don't worry. God's got this. Either way, either way, you win. Wow. I know people in this church that were going through things, and I find out later on that somebody, they were ministering to somebody as they were going through their pain. But as they were going through their pain, they still reached out and touched somebody else. And when they did, man, oh man, the power. While they were thinking they were powerless, they didn't realize how much power they had. God is in control. And God can use your pain to bring the rain. Wow. God can use your pain to bring the rain in somebody else's life. More powerful than you know. God's got you. I want everybody to stand. You may not have been had a chance to speak the circumstances you're in. You may not. It may not be your fault at all. Or it could even be your fault. Whatever. You're in these circumstances that you did not ask for. <laughs> and you're wondering how God can get glory out of that. 
and for you to show somebody what you and God can do. Let's work on it. It ought to be something great. <laughs> Constantly telling people, <clears throat> I know it looks like it's bad, but God's not through with it yet. Ha, ha, ha. 